Crafting has been a staple of MMORPGs since literally the inception of MMOs. It's basically the process where you take gathered materials and you mash them together to make new stuff. Either weapons, armor, whatever. Just about every MMO has had some kind of crafting system to some level of complexity. But never have I seen an MMO that takes crafting to such extremes as the one I'm about to show you today. This is literally a game within a game. And it is highly involved, it can get complex in higher levels, but it is extremely rewarding. And that is crafting in Final Fantasy XIV. Now, Final Fantasy XIV is a bit unique among MMOs. It is one of the few where a single character can play every single class and job in the game. And when I say every single class, I am not kidding. Every single class that is available in the game is accessible via one character. This is called the Armory System. It's a throwback from Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV's ill-fated 1.0. And when I say every single class in the game, I mean every single class. In Final Fantasy XIV, one character can play every single available class. This includes limited classes such as Blue Mage. But you have the Trinity, which is a staple of most MMOs. You have your tank, your healer, your melee DPS, your physical ranged, and your magic DPS. And you can choose to change between any one of them at any time, as long as you are not in combat. But I did say crafting is a game within a game. And this is how it works. You have the Disciples of the Hand and the Disciples of the Land. The Disciples of the Land are extremely important. These are the Miner, Botanist, and Fisher. These three classes gather all the materials that all these other classes use in order to make things. Yes, every single crafting profession is a different class. Each one has levels, each one has gear, each one has special skills, each. Some of them share the same skills. And each of them has their own separate guild with a storyline that you follow that you do like every five levels. And then after level 50, every three levels. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to craft and how to do anything in the game. But we're going to show you exactly what each of these special classes do and what their particular roles are and what makes them so important to one another because they are interconnected with one another on a fundamental level. Let's start with the Disciples of the Land. The role of the miner is to go out and find these mining nodes. These mining nodes have items in them. Now, there's a number next to them, a percentage. That tells you the chances of actually getting that particular item. Now, you'll always see these. There are sometimes some hidden items as well. That depends on different factors and, and different attributes that you have. But if the nodes are of a level higher than what you're currently at, this percentage will actually be lower. But there are abilities you can use that will increase your percentage. Let's get some muddy water from here. Let's get some of this copper. And that is Miner. Botanist works exactly the same way, except you can get materials off of plants and trees. In this instance, we're going to get some cotton.
And over here, we're going to get us some wood. So we need some elm log. Now, this is not a guide on how to craft. This is essentially a demonstration. And what I'm going to demonstrate to you today is how crafters work. Every crafter essentially works the same way, including culinarian. They all essentially have the same or similar abilities to one another that allow them to do what they do or improve their chances of creating an item from the materials that they have on hand. In this case, I'm going to do a demonstration of Weaver. And Weaver is the class that produces clothing. And it can also produce items used for glamours. That's a subject for another video. So we've got some, we've got some cotton balls. We're gonna make some cotton yarn. So we've got 12 and it takes two. So let's craft up some cotton yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use innovation, great strides. I'm going to use some standard touch and that is going to increase the quality of the item. What this does is this allows me to make a high quality or HQ item. Now you may have noticed some numbers changed on here. This is the quality bar. If you increase this all the way to 100%, what you're going to produce is going to be an HQ item. This is your durability. This is the durability of the items that you're working with. In other words, the cotton balls. You have a certain amount, and every time you use an ability, such as one that increases progression or increases quality, you're going to use up 10 points from this durability. There is an ability that allows you to use fewer points than that. And then there's the condition. The condition affects how far this bar increases when you use abilities. What this changes to is completely random. It's completely up to RNG. So let's finish off this craft and make some HQ cotton yarn. And there we go. That is basically how crafting works. And it works that way with every crafter, including Culinarian. Now, the reason why I'm setting Culinarian apart from all others is because it's the one crafting class that a lot of people are afraid of. Now, that's because, well, yeah, it, 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 it tends to use a lot of stuff and this stuff comes from all over the place some of these things you have to actually make some of these things you have to actually go out and have to actually find in the world culinarian can get crazy especially with inventory this is gonna blow your inventory out like crazy trying to find this stuff and a lot of this stuff you're going to have to get off of monsters or some of it is store-bought some of it has to be made by other classes there's a lot of interdependence in the crafting in final fantasy 14. probably one of the most important of the crafters has to be alchemist alchemy is extremely important in final fantasy 14 because it is used to make a lot of things that are used by a lot of other crafters. Not only can it create potions that can possibly save your life, but you can also create glass lenses for glasses for the goldsmith to make glasses with. You make the glues that the armor and blacksmith use to make weapons and armor. And you make a lot of the reagents and a lot of the um, substances that Culinarian uses. And also is used in a lot of other, other crafting recipes. In this instance, we, we got some muddy water. And so we're going to make some distilled water. 
And again, it works essentially the same way as the Weaver we demonstrated earlier. And there, made some high quality distilled water. Fisher is almost entirely RNG based. You have various abilities that enhance your ability to get fish, but basically the kind of fish you get is basically random. Now you can use different baits and different lures in order to improve your chances of getting the fish that you want, but it's all based heavily on RNG and you just have to be very patient with it. This is not something that you can be impatient with. There are guides on fishing. This is just a demonstration of how all this works. I'm not going to go into extreme detail on all of this. The different fish that you can catch have a preferred bait. Um, also, some of them prefer specific weather conditions. And they can only be found in certain locations all around the game world. And once you catch a fish, it gets put into your guide here. That way, if you need to get it again for some reason, you can come to this guide and it will tell you, you know, where can you find it? Is it time restricted? You know, is it, does it only come out during certain times of the day? Does it... Um, like certain bait, things like that, you have to know. Now, leveling Fisher is actually pretty straightforward. The best way to really level your Fisher fast is to go on the boat rides. And these are scheduled at specific times of the day in the game. And you'll be paired up with a bunch of people who are all doing it and you will level up fast here you use rather cheap bait or lures in order to catch the fish and you have to be here at a specific spot on the pier at in limsa lamensa get aboard the boat and you will level very quickly so leveling fisher is not that hard and leveling your crafters is not that hard either Simply walk through your crafting guide. See everything here? Every item that has a check mark on it is something that you've crafted. Every time you craft something new that you don't have a check mark on, you get a load of XP. So walk through everything that's within your level range that you can see on the guide and make that item. Craft it and you will get a load of XP. And that is how you level your crafters. That's essentially crafting in Final Fantasy XIV. You have the Disciples of the Land, which go out and collect materials, which the Disciples of the Hand, which then use to create stuff. And some of them are codependent upon one another to create things that they use to make other stuff from their recipes. There's a lot of crossover. Except for Culinarian. Culinarian is its own little beast that doesn't really use stuff from anyone else. Except maybe a little bit of stuff from Alchemist. And that's about it. Culinarian, a lot of people are afraid of it because of its complexity. But it's a good crafting class to have. can create food that gives you buffs. That not only buffs your uh, Disciples of War or Disciples of Magic but you also get crafting buffs and gathering buffs. So you can just push yourself over your limits of your existing stats just a little bit by eating some food. And that could be the difference between successfully getting something from a mining node or not getting something successful from a mining node or for being able to HQ an item that is normally really hard to HQ. That food item can mean the difference between success and failure. Because if you fail a craft, you can lose materials. And some of those materials can be very hard to find. Or you have to go far afield to get them. And that is what makes crafting in Final Fantasy XIV 
so rewarding and so complicated. It is also one of the best ways to make money in the game. And I know that if you are a crafter and you can make your own weapons and armor, you really don't need that much money. But there's one area, one place where money is absolutely vital. You absolutely need it. And if you don't have it, you are shit out of luck. And that is housing. Housing in Final Fantasy XIV is essential in this game, especially if you have a free company. Why? Well, you have a chocobo, and your chocobo is your companion throughout the game. It can help you fight, and you need onions in order to get them past their level caps. And the only way to get those onions is to grow them on, on housing plots. And the only way to have these gardens is to actually own a house. And that was crafting in Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, it is an extremely rewarding system. It is can be complicated, especially at higher levels. Culinarian can be a daunting one because of all the ingredients that are needed you're probably going to have to spend extra money on the game in order to get extra retainers you're given at least one i believe you can get a second one under certain conditions for free and then you have to pay like two dollars extra for each every other one that you get but having them is almost necessary if you're going to be doing crafting on any large scale um in any way because you're going to need the inventory space to hold all the materials for things you're going to be making as i said it is one of the only ways of making money really fast in this game in order to get a house in a house it almost essential to have a house in Final Fantasy XIV because you need them to be able to grow the onions that you need for your chocobo. Although you can get those through, you know, a free company by joining a free company that owns a house or, you know, you make the money, you can buy them off the market board that people are selling at really high prices. And if you're a crafter, well, you're probably making millions, so you can probably afford those onions. Anyway, I've been Mike DeZorch. Thanks for watching. Um, trying out some new ideas for the channel. As I said, I'm rebooting the channel. And so this is the first of my new ideas. And I will be seeing you next time.